Excuse the kitty, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 9, Episodes 5 and 6, Point of No Return, and Common Ground. Okay, to me, both of these had major issues, but completely different issues. Well, the second one really didn't have a major issue, it just made it hard for me to watch. Also the fact that it was a very standard story. But, let's go back to the first one, Point of No Return. They took forever to get to the point, and by no means did they make it clear that this is the point they were trying to point out, because to me, it was not about being overly perfect, it was about feeling shame about maybe hurting a friend. Which is rather important. You believe that your action caused someone else harm. That's a valid concern, and much more valid than the original, oh no, this book is late, which is what we started with. But for Dusty to no longer be at the library, and for it to be very clearly implied that an overdue book was the reason why, means that Twilight is feeling all sorts of guilt that is reasonably justifiable because it is important to be aware of how our actions affect others. And at no point really to me that did this episode say, yeah, you don't need to be perfect at everything. The only point they ever kind of had that was the several instances where they went, oh, this happens all the time. Because Spike was like, I'm sure it happens all the time. And then the librarian who was at the counter was like, oh yeah, it happens all the time until she looked at the due date, and then sent her down to severely overdue. So you had that hanging over her head. And none of this was implying it was about imperfection or perfection. None of it. Like, it, they literally had to spill it out to, at the end for me. I'm like, this was about not being perfect? Returning something that you borrowed is being responsible. Returning it at the agreed upon time is also being responsible. I liked your idea better. How about you share with the audience? The, this concept would have been conveyed so much better and would have still worked with Twilight if they had her working on a project that had a due date on it. And she wanted it to be absolutely perfect and she missed the deadline for it. And her friends are trying to tell her that it didn't need to be perfect. You could even have like while, her, while she's working on the project in the episode, her friends visit her over time and it's like, Gently saying, basically, you don't need to make this perfect. It looks great to us. And it's hitting all of the major points of what you needed out of this project. I mean, I even have like a personal version of this. A friend of mine commissioned me to do some audio work for them. Both him and Ember basically said, you shouldn't take this long. It's good if you do it this way. I didn't believe them until I created an A-B test for my friend. Send him that and he said, I can't tell the difference. Oh, so what I was doing was removing mouth noises from the audio recording that he didn't hear, but I heard them because I've tuned my ears to pick up on them. So yeah, that took me forever because I had to use a special tool and get every single mouth noise. You would be surprised at how many of those happen in a single word. A lot, especially if you're not recording audio in studio style conditions, or at least you know, something a little more soundproof. So something like that would have conveyed the point so much better, and they wouldn't even had to have they wouldn't had to have spelled it out at the end of the episode. They could have just said, they could have had Twilight go, "Wow, I don't really need to be perfect." Instead of saying, instead of doing what they did at the end of this episode, which was basically spelling it out clear as day, what the point was. Like, why didn't you use the episode to do that? That's really what the episode was for. I mean, if you wanted to go back to Canterlot and run into these characters and show a really awesome retirement home, I, I would not mind retiring there. Yeah, that is crazy. She's also one of those cool old people that, like, are still extremely active. And you're like, I'm 30. And you're running around like that. And I feel older than you. Yes, yes. I, I had an older friend who would go to Belize and go scuba diving. I'm like, eh, I can't even do laps in the kiddie pool. 
uh, yeah, that that is a like an excellent retirement home. Also, it's gonna be interesting if that fruit fight thing that happened at the end becomes like a thing at Brony Conventions. Oof, that's gonna be messy. But it was a way to have paintball without having guns. Mm hmm. I was perfectly okay with it, cause it actually it actually looked fun. Though, oh my god, I would shower so much after that. Just the juices from most fruit becomes really sticky really quick. Also, you're outside, insects. God, I hope they don't have pineapples. <laughs> Bananas, okay. Apples, not so much, but pineapples, man. Those things have spikes on them. Yes. It was kind of awkward. Yeah. Though I love things that point out what, but it, it'll be suspicious. Yes, Twilight Sparkle in a library. Nobody ever sees that coming. I love how like the thing that everyone reacted to throughout the episode was when she says something about like not wanting a book or something like that, and everyone goes, oh! <laughs> "Yeah, uh, she isn't checking out a book that day," and everyone in the library gasps. And then when she's trying to make her apology to Dusty, and she's like. If this is what it takes, I will never borrow a book from anywhere ever again for the rest of my life. I love how, like, that's the reaction. Like, yeah, that totally makes sense. Because that's what's out of character. Everyone knows that Twilight Sparkle, Princess of Friendship, is a bookworm. Though I do like how they snuck in some stuff at the beginning of the episode from the box. How we got some more, like, family stuff for Twilight. Also, it was very obvious it was from Celestia, I think, because that giant postage stamp with her cutie mark. Hmm. I missed that. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I love some of the callbacks like, oh, my G1 Star Swirl figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was great. Yeah, I, I really thinned out my G1 ponies a long time ago. I still have some. But they're at my parents. And just to say something, I actually did like the contents of the episode. I was just confused by the message. The message was unclear. The characters were in character. I mean, I, I liked the episode. It was well written except for the moral. <laughs> this thing that bugged me, like what they wrote was good. But it didn't match the message at the end of the episode. <laughs> Not really. And then at the very end, she pays the fine and then keeps the book. I'm like, um, you should have handed over a few more bits because even though the library bought a newer edition, if they're like a lot of other libraries, they have a section where they have books that they're getting rid of or books that have been donated that they sell for fundraising. So you do have to remember that libraries tend to be federally supported and that support tends to trickle away and from what i understand most libraries actually do have a cap on how big the late fee can be yes that is actually common because they still want to get the book back so if you keep charging everyone forever like bank overdraft fees oh those things are murder or overdraft protection where they will suck money from one of your other connected accounts to cover the overdraft. Well, in that case, you're protected and don't incur any fees, but the point is to not get into negative territory in the first place. But sometimes things do happen. Charges hit faster than you were anticipating. A charge comes through for larger than what you authorized, or your account gets hacked. <laughs> or just some jerk commissioning from you and then saying... After he gets the commission from you, telling PayPal that he didn't get the product and they refund him. Ooh, ouch. It's a good policy for PayPal to err on the side of the person buying, but it was a big thing for a while ago. Several of my friends who are commission artists got hit hard by some people getting big commissions, paying, and then the next day saying, I didn't get the product or something to make PayPal refund the money. And suddenly their accounts are in the negative. Because they had the money. And they did the work in good faith. 
I heard there's some protections in place now for both sides to help prevent that in the future, but still, that was nasty. But moving on to either the next episode or back to the episode we were talking about. Well, flying all over Equestria, I'm surprised they weren't more tired. Yeah, that also brought up something from one of the other reviewers I watched for the first two episodes. Twilight is teleporting a lot more often and is showing like no fatigue whatsoever from it now. Because in the first season and as they move through the seasons, Twilight visibly showed that she was tired or drained a little bit from the teleporting. Now she's doing it as if she was like, walk two feet, teleport. Yeah, not nearly as... And she's doing entire groups with no problem. Which is interesting. Because she's either gotten stronger, learned more efficient ways to cast her magic, or we're not worrying about matching back to previous levels. Or it's a combination of all of those. Yes. But we did have some nice callbacks here because we got to see Moon Dancer, we got to see Tasty Treat, and Restaurant Row. Also, it was I found it hilarious that Spike was mistaken for a waiter. He's a dragon. There aren't exactly a lot of those walking around Equestria. Yeah, I guess it's just because he exudes a helpful demeanor because he's been around Twilight so much as her assistant. And as her assistant, he always has pen and paper, so... Yeah, it's kind of like I, I have this interesting thing where I will walk into a store, no matter what clothes I am wearing, people will go, so can you help me find this as if I was an employee? Yeah, me too. And I'll go, oh, I'm sorry, I am not an employee, but I can get something for you, but I can also tell you where you what you were looking for. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. That was like a great moment in the episode. Mainly because we both experienced it, though not at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Spike was like, I'm not, okay, I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> like, eh, never mind, I can do this. Reminds me of that scene from Emperor's New Groove where Kronk suddenly becomes a chef. Yes. Chef. I said shift. Not sure that's the thing. So, yeah, like we're pointing out right now, we liked the episode itself. Just the message and moral at the end didn't quite mesh with the rest of the episode because there were a lot of things. Taking responsibility for others and with Dusty, taking something bad and it actually being a catalyst for something good. In the classic, when life hands you lemons, and whoever said make lemonade doesn't know about lemon cello. I, I'm not really a drinker at all, but apparently that's what you do during Meyer lemon season, is make lemon cello. Hmm. Well, what I do is I make a um, sugar-free lemon pie. <laughs> well, I don't. I have a couple of people who do do that with the lemons. I just help pick them. <laughs> yes, and... I also have a lemon ricotta recipe over on Tumblr. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very tasty. Mm -hmm. Links down below. <laughs> and now on to the next episode, where well, my problem with this episode was I had so much trouble watching it. It was cringe from beginning to end for me. Because I was like, okay, this is what's going to happen. That's exactly what happened. This is, yeah... Oh my god. Also, why are you using this formula? Why are you using the formula from, like, TV shows back in the 90s from like, TGIF? Yeah, because it was basically the TGI Friday lineup in pony form. The classic person dating someone else wants to impress the kid, does a lot of stupid stuff, and then finds out in the end that you could have just done this one thing and... Instead of trying so hard, you want to be yourself because... That's how you attracted the significant other. You, you have to be the same around both. You can't pretend to be all those things. Yeah, and the thing is, don't try to impress them with what you think they want. Impress them with who you are. Because that's who they're going to get, is who you are. And in all circumstances, in all relationships of any type, business, personal, platonic, romantic, casual, would you rather not be liked for who you are and what your assets and traits and personality is rather than pretending to be something you're not? Yeah, it's really, it, 
it gets tiring pretending to be something else for a while, from what I know. Because I I have trouble pretending unless I'm doing story, because ADHD makes it really hard to keep up a lie. Because <laughs> that's not what you told me yesterday. Fudge. <laughs> and he has trouble with that even with the truth. Yeah. Like, that's what you told me yesterday. Oh, bugger. Uh, well, I found out something new today, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, it was just painful. And until we saw Quibble, I thought maybe the common ground was going to be infighting with the Ponyville Buckball team. Because there was Snail charging for autographs while they just walked on by. Some people do charge for autographs. That is an artist's personal decision, not getting into that. But when you have a team of three people, one staying there signing autographs and charging for them, and the other two are just walking off, there's a bit of a disconnect there with the team. Not just that. It was implied that if Snails did this for too long, he would accidentally disqualify their team because they wouldn't show up for a match. Yes, because if they took too long, they'd miss the match. Also, if he wears himself out, he's not going to be able to perform well in the match. Though I do like the part near the end where Quibble quibbles and rule Nazis the referee. Technically, this says that I have to get into a basket. It doesn't say which one. Yes, it's very clearly not actually in the rule book. Yeah. That is very important. It could be ruled that this is what we meant by this, and then that's amended to the rules. So that is important to the game itself. It was not the best way to spend your time. I mean, the entire idea and everything Rainbow Dash did was a stupid idea. And she was so proud of everything. Gotta love a little bit of Gen 1 Rainbow Dash peeking through. Not Gen 1. Season 1 Rainbow Dash peeking through. Yeah, Gen 1 Rainbow Dash would be Firefly. Yeah, or... Actually, was that Gen 2? I remember there was a version of Rainbow Dash where she is a fashion pony. Gen 3, I believe. Or maybe 3.5, which is basically Teletubbies done pony style, from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do not speak of it. Uh, but yeah, I, that, that's, that's one of the parts I actually really enjoyed. Where, oh, he's rule lowering him. It's great. Because mm -hmm. that shows his uh, passion for stuff like that. Like he, when he was talking about, oh, this is just like ogres and oogliettes or whatever that's called. Yeah, ogres and oogliettes. He's going, there is more math to buckball than ogres and oogliettes. Uh, and he was actually... Even though he was trying to buy stuff for her, or do stuff for her, he was like, he didn't realize he was laying a lot of himself through. Like, when he bought her the book, he wasn't thinking about her. He was thinking, okay, if I get something like this, she'll like it, right? No. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes, it's buckball related, but it's not actually physically active. She is a very active young pegasi. That's... Why she's not particularly interested in reading is because she'd rather be up and doing. And realistically, Quibble Pants could have actually used the connections he had without making a fool of himself. He could like say, like, this is how I ended up with friends with Rainbow Dash. She's also a geek. Yeah, could have pointed out. We met at a Daring Do convention showing that you know, you don't have to be just one thing. Also, okay, her father is very sporty. That doesn't mean you should try to be sporty. Because you're not trying to replace her father. I was just, it was not far enough in the relationship between the adults. But this thing was so by the book, I was waiting for the, you're not my real dad line. Because that's how by the book this was. Yeah, we even had that scene where they'll never replace my father or parent or... But I understand that. I've never been in that situation. My family is like rock solid. 
your family is much less uh, spread out, I would say, or re-spliced. Re-spliced might be a good term. My, my family is like really tight knit. Even though we're living in different parts of the country, we call each other up and talk for hours. We won't call each other as much as we would like, but that's a different story entirely. <laughs> it's mainly because once you guys are on the phone, it suddenly a couple hours disappear. Yeah. Though if you talked more often, that might tone down. Yeah. But yeah, this thing was, it was so like by the book and cringy for me because I already knew the outcome of all the scenes and they're like the most embar embarrassing outcomes. Like, oh, they're going to do this and that embarrassing thing is going to happen. Oh, they do, they're doing this. Yeah, and this embarrassing thing that was going to happen. I was hoping that they'd do something like a scene that would usually end up be end up being embarrassing actually ends up being a good thing. And it's because he starts showing his true colors and then the kid likes him for that. Not the whole, I'm sorry, at the end, and then he starts showing his true colors. I was hoping that they'd twist up the formula by like, he starts acting like himself completely by accident and the kid goes, that's so cool! Instead of saving that for the very end when they're watching the game. Also, she just started warming up to you. It's a little too soon for a hug. Kind of like the whole thing with Mod Pie and the candy necklaces. Yeah, you guys had a foundation to start learning about each other, but it was not a we exchange special friendship necklaces level. It was a starting point, not an end point. We had issues with these two episodes. The first one, the main issue was like, so the message doesn't match the story. The story was still good, but the message doesn't match the story. If they had a different message at the end, like you should care for your friends and stuff like that or something like that that may more match the whole, oh, no, I may have gotten my friend fired. Yes, because the first part was a blemish on her record and then it escalated to, oh, this really hurt someone. And then we boil it all down to, no, it's fine because this was a good thing and, oh, you're not in eternal debt to the library because there's a cap. Yeah, and you get to keep the book. I just realized that they just removed the whole perfection thing and changed it into sometimes a bad thing's actually a good thing. Yeah, a lot of things are subject to interpretation. What you think may be awful may not be as bad as you think. So yeah, confusing message on the episode five and cringeworthy by the book on episode six. I mean, kudos for them for exploring different family dynamics because we had this last season with the um hippogriff versus uh sea pony living arrangements mm -hmm. you know they weren't technically divorced because they still really cared about each other but they were living separately because one wanted to be a sea pony and one wanted to be a hippogriff you know they didn't spell out that it was divorce but you know you wouldn't necessarily in a kid show and here you know we're looking at Ah, remarriage. And, you know, sometimes that comes with additional ties and needing to blend two families together. Though they've touched a little bit on blending families together with the hearthwarming episode with the apples and the pies. Because that was where two sets of traditions clashed and they needed to find a way to work together. So, with that wrapped up, it is now time for the outro. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 9, Episodes 5 and 6, Point of No Return and Common Ground. And I, and I don't know why suddenly I wanted to go, next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Probably because I went a little gravelly on my delivery there, but hey. Another show, another outro. The usual is like, subscribe, share, comment. Ring the bell, watch other videos, and once you're ready to leave YouTube, we have links for that too. Art, commissions, Patreon, coffee, Tumblr. I mentioned Tumblr separately, even though it has art, because we both have Tumblr. Also, Ember's reading room, uh, before you leave YouTube. I went out of order that time. It, it, unless you're new, welcome, if you're new. Uh, you kind of already know all this stuff. So thanks again for listening.
Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.